three exercises where being overweight actually can work in your favor. The first one is sled. The heavier you are, the more you actually can lean into it and use more resistance without increasing the impact on your joints, okay? So as you start to lose weight, you're also getting stronger. Therefore, you can continue to increase that resistance while dropping the weight. But starting out, having extra weight, you can always do this exercise because you're just using that weight for your advantage. And then even look at it backward. Same thing. More weight, okay. it's easier. As I lose weight, but I'm getting stronger, I can continue to increase that resistance on the sled. We use set amounts of weight and we time it. And even the leanest, fastest guy in the gym is not winning on the sled. It's gonna be someone bigger with more weight if, if the weight here is equal. So it's pretty cool that running is like, unfortunately, one of the most injurious things an overweight person can do. Not that it doesn't work out for some, but it's like much, it's like exponentially more chance of creating a chronic knee problem by running when you're overweight. Whereas the sled is actually easier to move it. So it's and, pretty freaking cool. Yeah, and a perfect segue into that is certain body weight exercises. Again, which Ben is gonna show us split squat at home. You can do this anywhere. Here's an example. Two, two classic ones for us. They are seated good morning and split squat. So Fernando and I would tend to have to use weight to stretch into, for example, on this one, the inner thigh muscles to stretch. And then if you look on a, on a split squat, it's really like the stretches yeah. is here in the hip flexor. So stretching, 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 stretching. So like for us, in a nutshell, like this is why ATG works so well. It's because we're getting, this is the first system where it's just you're measurably, with measurable mobility, measurable strength, getting stronger through mobile positions. But if you're overweight, yeah, you could start right now. All of a sudden this, holding this position. It's like this is in our, in our back ability zero program. You're just trying to hold this for 30 seconds. All of a sudden you might be shaking, sweating. More weight is gonna be harder for this person you're, than the lighter person. Yeah, you're gonna make, you're gonna get a stronger knee, more flexible hip, then you can turn it around from a seat and you can be getting reps like this. Now the extra weight is actually stretching the adductors more. Now as you lose weight, you might actually have to start to add some weight into these. But the point is, if you now get into controlled, full range of motion at your pain-free level, now you're getting more flexibility, more strength, more protection around the joint, like right from home without even having to get into a gym yet. So it's pretty, pretty freaking unique when you realize that with these two concepts, sledding and strength through length, then if you're overweight, you can actually make like even, you can, <laughs> with the sled, safer than other forms of cardio. Mm -hmm. With strength through length, you can even make like rapid progress with that. Your weight is no longer this huge barrier against you that normally is a, a big risk factor, a big barrier that solves it. Yeah, and to, so to, to tie that all together, obviously for fat loss, for body fat, you know, for body composition change, you need to incorporate a simple basic diet. Don't do crash diets. This is why we created the basic 30 challenge because it's just getting the basics, the basics of strength through length, your basic low impact cardio, eat high protein, eliminate the junk food, the processed foods, drink enough water. Just with those simple basics, whether maybe you're not confident enough to go into it, okay, you can do this at home, right? So wherever you are in your journey, we like to find a way that you can make changes and actually start to really change your body and yeah. make serious gains, so. Yeah, and we're about 20 days in. Yeah, 20. And the whole idea 20. is how can you do like some challenge, but in a way that is creating uh, a lifestyle long-term. So for me, if I get that, if I get that lighting right. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten, I've lost. We've both gotten leaner. I've lost some extra fat while increasing strength because I'm actually not trying to eat less. Normally when I try to lose weight, I try to eat less. And that's valid, but for me that also means more cravings, maybe not feeling as good throughout the day. So I've actually been eating breakfast, lunch, dinner. Breakfast, what I've been doing is I've been putting an egg on top of a burger patty. Nice. It's like a pretty hearty breakfast. And then what I've been doing is as the day goes, 
rather than just trying to go to sleep hungry or something like that. Avocados, high in calories, fruit high in calories. I do it in that order. So if I, if I have avocados with salt, that often at night I'm like, like after dinner, like avocados, like I feel incredible, but then wake up much leaner in the morning than if I would have had ice cream or something. Exactly. But I feel, so the difference for me, I won't feel as good if I make myself just restrict and not eat. So that doesn't feel as good. Ice cream feels great, except the next day I don't like, you don't feel like great about yourself, right? I feel great while I'm eating it. <laughs> but then I don't feel as good in life. I don't feel as good in my sport. I can feel that just kind of extra, little extra weight. And I just don't feel as good when I eat the junk or while I eat it, I feel good after. And it's not for that five minutes or 10 minutes. It's the momentary So then 20, yeah. yeah. Whereas the avocado, like something like that, that normally you think, oh my gosh, that's high calorie. But for whatever reason, I mean, that, that works. So we're, we're giving tips that, you know, diets can be different for everyone, but it is different to me to think about trying to get in your best shape and not being told, good, we're gonna start skipping meals and stuff, which is, which is totally valid if that works for you. But every time I get into some fad aspect of that where I'm not listening to my body's craving. Like how can you listen to your body? Similar with the sled, we're not, it's not a cheat, it's still like you're putting in the work, but it's so, these things are so natural yes. that they just tend to work better than artificial gimmicks. So trying to, trying to explain it the best I can and yeah. tips that are working for me. That's working for me, right? I'm eating three meals a day. If I'm still hungry at the end of the day, avocado. If I'm still hungry, fruit. And exactly. then I like, have some sweeter fruits yeah. and berries. That the key is sustainability. From everything you just said there, maybe it's sustainable for you to eat once a day, twice a day, as a you know, fat intermittent fasting. Maybe it's sustainable for you to be on a low calorie diet, depending on your body type, whatever. There's a thousand things we could talk about. The key is that sustainability. So yeah. for Ben, for chase me, for you, chase what is sustainable. Eliminate processed foods. So I'm basically giving, and what we like to do is give you the options that you can have as much of yeah. as you want. Because it is personal. It's exactly. the same way we approach exercise. Everyone who comes in here does such different levels of everything. Correct. So it's the same with diet. It's not one size fits all. Correct. But there's going to be certain frameworks. Exactly. So we're giving you the framework that works, and then you adapt for what's sustainable for you. Yep. Yeah. Hope it helps you or someone you know. Yeah.